Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you about my finalized Mini Mac setup. So I've had it for a little bit over two and a half months. I finally have it set up to the way that I like it and I think it's going to be for a long time. I did buy some new accessories for it so I want to show you the new accessories and how to set up some of the stuff and the time capsule and then at the end I'll give you my overall non-technical user perspective of the uh, M1 Mini Mac and the new accessories I have added to it. So these are the accessories I've updated my M1 Mac Mini with since I purchased it back in December. Uh, the first one was a change from the wired Mac uh, aluminum keyboard, which I actually really like quite a bit, to the Logitech MX Keys keyboard, which I like a lot too. You can see looking at them that they're about the same uh, width and height. They are both full-size keyboards. The reason I decided to go with the Logitech instead of the Apple uh, wireless keyboard was a couple of reasons. One is price and the other is that the uh, Logitech has some features that Apple doesn't have. Mainly it has uh, the capability to uh, set a profile up for three different devices that it will link up to, such as iPads or what have you, um, which the uh, Apple wireless one does not have. It also has a backlit keyboard, which is nice. It's not uh, the most important thing in the world, but it is kind of nice when the room's dark or something like that to have the keyboard come on. Now, the other thing that I upgraded to was I went from the Apple Magic Mouse to the Logitech MX Master 3 uh, mouse. Now, a lot of people don't like the uh, Apple Magic Mouse. Uh, I've always kind of liked it. I never really had any issues with it. But the reason that I wanted to upgrade to the Logitech uh, was, um, again, I wanted to go wireless to get some cables off the desk. Not that the Magic Mouse isn't. But for some reason, my Apple mouse just, I don't know what these um, runners are made out of. You can see there's a little dirt on there, but um, I don't know what they're made out of compared to uh, this mouse or my Razer my razor mouse. But for some reason, this magic mouse just does not feel smooth on my mouse pad. It's like, uh, it really takes an effort. It, it like has a lot of friction and drag on the mouse pad and it's uh, not pleasant to move and slows down your movements and the mouse cursor and stuff like that. Whereas this mouse and my uh, Razer mouse for my gaming PC just kind of fly across that mouse pad with very little friction. It's very smooth and what have you. But generally speaking, um, I watched a lot of YouTube reviews and read a lot of reviews on these two Logitech products and other products, accessories, keyboards, and mouse for the M1 before I purchase them. And the Logitech seem to have the best reviews of all the things out there. I've been very happy with um, both the keyboard and the mouse. I have not had any of the connectivity problems that uh, you may have heard some people talking about a couple months ago when the M1s first came out. There were some Bluetooth connectivity issues. I haven't had that, but that said, I have been using the supply dongle uh, in the back of the Mac Mini uh, that comes with it. Uh, it does unfortunately take up one of your ports, but uh, I've had no connectivity issues at all with the Logitech mouse or keyboard. And um, like I said, I've been really happy with both of them. And it's nice to get those wires off the desktop. Now, in my previous video about my uh, purchase of the M1, I also talked about how I purchased this um, USB hub to go along with it because the Mac Mini is a little bit uh, short on ports compared to other computers. And this gives you a couple USB 3.0 ports, your 
uh, SD card readers, regular and micro, and two other USB ports. But one of the reasons I bought this hub was because it has an internal slot for a two and a half inch drive. So I did finally get around to purchasing a new uh, Samsung two and a half inch SSD drive. This one here is the 860 Evo and it's two terabytes. Uh, so it should give me uh, plenty of storage options going forward because um, the Mac that I bought only had uh, 500 um, gigabytes. So this one here is two terabytes. So really all I have to do is plug it in like that. And then we should be good, good to go. I should just have to format the drive uh, once I turn it back on. Uh, there are some screws here that I can't find to screw that back in. I don't think it's necessary, but if I do find the screws, I will go ahead and screw that in. So now let's uh, go ahead, hook the Mac Mini back up again, and format that drive and see how it works. Okay, we are back at the... Uh at the desk, the uh, Mini Mac is hooked back up again, so we're going to go ahead and see if we can format this new drive. You can see we have the Mac hard drive here, a Mini G 500 gigabytes, and a 2 terabyte Western Digital SSD that's hooked into a USB port. But we really want to use this internal one in the hub. That way, we're not having to use a... Uh, port. So first thing we got to do is come down here to uh, Disk Utilities and let's take a look what we got and this is our drive right here AMST 2 terabytes. We're going to go ahead and format that and let's give this, we're going to call this Samsung 2 terabyte and we have some uh, choices here this is the new Apple file system. This is what we want to use. This is the old one right here. And this is DOS. XFAT here is for a drive that you want to use in both a Mac and a Windows computer. I think I'm going to redo this drive here as an XFAT. But for the meantime, let's do this Samsung and hit erase and see what happens. It shouldn't take too long to format this disk. Okay, it's done. So now we uh, we can see our Samsung disk here. Now we should be able to read files to it. So let's put our test file in there and close it. Open it. There's our test file still there. Let's move that to the trash. Move this to the trash. And there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take all the files of this mini G drive, put them onto the Samsung internal drive, and then we're going to use this as our drive for our time capsule. So now we have transferred the files from the mini G to the W or excuse me to the Samsung two terabytes and deleted all the files in here. Now I want to go ahead and reformat this because this is a really old drive. I think I got in 2012 and then we're going to start to use that as our time capsule backup moving forward. So we're at our mini G we want to erase it. We're going to keep the same name and we're going to keep that same format. We're, we're not going to do the APS because for time capsule, you need the old Mac extended journal. So we're going to erase. And when this is done, we should get a prompt to make this our time capsule default. So here we go. Do you want to make this? 
we're going to set that up. Time capsule, let's see. You must create a backup password. Time capsule will use this to encrypt your backup disk. disk. All right, so now you can see on our screen that the icon for this mini G has changed from what it used to look like to the time capsule. We're going to put that in the bar. And let's see here. Any options? All right, so now time capsule is up and running. You can see that that mini G has turned into the time capsule drive. And here we have the Western Digital in the uh, USB port and the Samsung drive. So previously I had 500 gigabytes on the Macintosh Mem1 Mini Mac hard drive. 500 on the mini G for one terabyte. The Samsung is two terabytes and the Western Digital is two terabytes. So that's a um, total of five terabytes of storage space, probably a little bit overkill for me. So I think what I'm gonna do eventually is uh, just kind of take this one off or maybe I will reformat it into the um, We come down here to this Western Digital and say erase. I could reformat it. Oh, it's not giving me the choice, but I could reformat that so I could use that with my, my gaming PC and my uh, Mac. But right now it's fine the way it is. I'll probably just end up ejecting it and uh, removing it and putting it in the drawer until I need it. Okay, so those were the new accessories I added. Uh, the Samsung Evos 2TB uh, hard drive or SSD drive. The Logitech MX keys and Logitech MX3 mouse. And I got to say, I am really, really happy with everything. But I do like the wireless keyboard and wireless mouse from Logitech. Uh, as I said earlier, I have not had any connectivity problems. Uh, like you may have heard about a couple months ago, I think Apple may have put out a firmware update. But I am using the dongle that Logitech provided. Uh, with the dongle, I've had no issues. The only thing I don't like about it is that dongle is taking up a USB port on the Mini Mac. And I did find that the dongle did not work when I used it in the uh, USB hub for some reason so i had to use one of the ports on the back of the mini mac which is fine because it freed up a port on the hub but anyhow that's my only thing that i could say that i i was unhappy about it i do like the uh the light keyboard or the backlit keyboard uh it's a nice little feature at night it's not a make or break thing but it is really nice i do really like the mouse it's precise it moves well it feels great in my hand and finally, the M1 Mac Mini. Overall, I really like it, but first, uh, there are a couple things that I don't like about it. So we'll, we'll hit this first. Um, compared to the previous Intel Mac Mini, that had four Thunderbolt ports on the back. For some reason, they've reduced this one to two. It really doesn't make any sense to me. They were already there. I don't know why you would take them out. The other thing that I don't like is that they um, they reduce the Ethernet port from 10 to 1 gigabyte, but I'm not using that anyhow. I'm using it on Wi-Fi. It really just doesn't make any sense to me why you would take out those two ports and change the uh, Ethernet port, I guess. In a little bit, they'll come out with a upgraded Mac Mini Pro that has four ports and things like that. Uh, but I, I thought that was kind of a lame thing to do because it's the same form factor it's the same case with just a different motherboard in it uh, really didn't make much sense to me why they took that out because 
you know, more ports are always better than fewer ports. And quite honestly, maybe I wouldn't have had to bought the USB hub if it had those other two ports, but I probably would have anyway. So those are kind of the two things that I don't really like what Apple did with the Mac Mini. Now the things that I do like about it, I do like the small form factor uh, uh, based on what I've seen on other videos. There's a lot of empty space in there and they probably could have made it much smaller, but Apple was just uh, too lazy to redesign it. Maybe they had a lot of the cases left over, they decided to use those up first before they did it. But in all event, you know, I still like the form factor. It's small, doesn't take up much space on my desk. Um, I like the uh, the speed of this new M1. Uh, I'm not, you know, going to run any tests and things like that for you. There's lots of other people um, already doing that, so you can check out other people's. Uh, benchmark tests of the Mac Mini against whatever, but I will tell you from a user perspective, this thing is fast, it's smooth, uh, everything just, uh, you know, just is incredibly fast. Uh, I'm not a big time video editor, I'm using uh, DaVinci to do these YouTube videos, but I can tell you it just runs smooth as silk in DaVinci, uh, outputting uh, my videos, which are usually 10 minutes or less. Roy, I haven't time and I'm just, you know, I, I put it on export. I go get a soda or a cup of coffee. I come back in a few minutes and it's done. So, you know, if you're in the market for a new Mac uh, desktop and you need one, I'd highly recommend it. If, if you don't, you know, of course, whatever comes out next, whatever they want to call it, the M1X, the M2, whatever, is going to be bigger, better, and faster. But uh, for me, I was at the point where I couldn't wait. This um, checked off all the blocks for me and the price factor on this for what you get for 700 bucks or in my case, uh, $1,000 because I got the 16 gigabytes and the 500K hard drive, which were all updates, is really probably one of the best deals in raw computing power per year dollar. So like I said, if you need it, go ahead and get it don't worry about it uh, of course like i said something new and better is going to come out but you know that's kind of the deal when you buy computer products um, buy the best that you can at the time use them for as long as possible because you know next month something newer shinier and faster is coming out but overall i'm happy uh with this setup that i have now and i think it's going to last me several years before i have to consider even thinking about a new computer well thanks for tuning in uh, if you like this video please uh, give it a thumbs up uh, if you're interested in what I'm doing here in my retiring days uh, subscribe to that button and uh, you can stay up with what I'm doing and you know if I can ever get the vaccine maybe Tiki Bar reviews will come back which was the whole purpose of this channel to begin with but we'll get back to that at some point again thanks for tuning in and I'll see you at the next video